I mean, having having TikTok on the car that was that was Dude, a big deal. That was amazing. Yeah. No, I mean that's that together. Yeah, that whole thing came together uh, through a tweet. Uh, my friend Ryan Pistano, who's actually the graphic designer over at uh, Alpha Prime Racing now, um, but he, I told him one day, kind of in passing, how much I love TikTok, and he put it on there, and sure enough, through. It got a lot of shares, got a lot of retweets and likes and ended up getting to the people at TikTok. They saw it. They were like, this was 2020. So 80, 90% of every corporation's marketing plans got thrown out the window. You know what I mean? So they were like, well, we kind of have what we have. Let's go do this. And that right there set the tone for my, (laughs) basically the way I attack marketing nowadays, because, you know, at the time, I'd only had, at the time, I think I only had six Xfinity starts when TikTok sponsored me. So here I am, relatively little known race car driver. Like, yeah, I had a following on social media and, that, and that's fantastic. But, you know, in terms of the grand scheme of things, not many people knew who Ryan Vargas was. And TikTok had no reason to sponsor me, plain and simple. I mean, yeah, I was one of the few NASCAR drivers on there, which was, I guess, is the big reason there. But I mean, for a massive corporation, a massive entity like TikTok to trust me at 19 years old with their brand, with their imaging, with their likeness, I think that set the tone for what I do. And, you know, I, I've, I've had to refine what I do. I've had to change up, you know, my strategies and stuff like that. But as you mentioned, as David, as you mentioned, like, it's all about making sure that you deliver for these partners because I mean, and just like David also mentioned, you know, they're the reason you're in a race car, right? I mean, critical path security, they're on my hat right now. They're the reason I'm in a race car. Um, I mean, these, these companies that sponsor me directly impact my career, my livelihood. And so I try and develop a good relationship with the people that I work with um, because it, to me, it's, when you work with me, it's it's about building that relationship. It's about growing and it's about accomplishing the goals that they have. That's the number one thing because we all remember the NASCAR boom period, but now we're past that boom period. Now it's about how do we activate? How do we actually deliver beyond just putting a sticker on a race car? Because as David knows, it that's 10% of it. That's I wouldn't even say if that's 10% of it, but I mean, it's it's all about the business plan. And that's been a very challenging but fun thing for me to learn um as time has gone on and it's been very it's been very useful especially moving forward into my later you know later years as i as i move forward um in the sport david this guy here's only 22 years old he's he's got a lot figured out yeah he's got a lot figured out i I love it i wish i'd have had that all this figured out at 22 but i wasn't even close you know and just uh you know, listening to you talk, Ryan, you you do bring a lot of value uh, to your partners, and, and it is about relationships, and uh, it's much bigger. Uh, you know, it's it's a lot of these partners that we have, they become family. Mm-hmm. You become family because, number one, because of, of the person you are, because, man, you're a hard worker, uh, you're driven, uh, you're honest, integrity about you, just you know, and I would just say that you're not only you're a champion on the racetrack, but you're a champion off the racetrack. And and a lot of these companies, they want a spokesperson that, man, when things are tough and you're not winning races and it's a challenge and things happen, that you still carry yourself like a champion. And, and you have all those qualities. And obviously, with all the sponsors you've had and have had, uh, they see that in you, you know, and, and uh for people like all of us, you know, Tyler, Dominic, and myself, uh, you know, we can appreciate hard work. And, and, you know, it wasn't like you came from a family that's that's very wealthy. I mean, it'd been great if all of us had wealthy, wealthy families that we came from. But the reality of it is, you know, we're just all hardworking people. and We don't have extra millions of dollars. So, you know, we have to go out there and represent our brand ourselves and then bring them to the racetrack and like you said you know 10 percent of it just decals on racetrack on the race car but it's just so much more to it than that uh and you do give a return to your to your sponsors or they wouldn't be with you as long as they have been but i don't think people realize uh the amount of effort and what it takes to 
to have great partners like that and the stress involved, you know, oh, yeah. and commitment, you know, it's like, man, you know, it's like we're making a paycheck when we're driving a race car, but when we're not driving a race car and we're trying out there flying here, going here, trying to, you know, take care of the sponsors we have and getting new ones. It's, 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 a it's, it's a, it's a big undertaking and not, and it's not for everybody, you know? So not only have you lived out your dream, uh, you've done a hell of a job. You, you do a great job. You're a great race car driver. And I respect the heck out of you because nothing, nobody ever gave you anything. Your dad gave you that, that, you know, your dad and your mom and dad gave you a lot. Uh, but man, you've had to go out there and make it happen. And you've done a, a great job, man. So congratulations to you. No, I appreciate that. It's, I mean, it, it it's all about just digging deep. I mean, like you mentioned, my mom's a kid. My mom's a first grade teacher. My dad's a construction worker. <laughs> like, I mean, I was like, it's, it's so unorthodox the way I've made it here, but I think that's, what's also pushed me to be better. That's also what's pushed me to just want it more because to me, I look at like, I, I, there's a couple times where I'm sitting on the driver intro stage. Like I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll actually put it out here. I mean, uh, Daytona this year, we qualified eight, qualified seventh. And Amazing. I remember, and I remember lining up in front of Ty Gibbs, lining up around, you know, all these, the Gibbs drivers, the junior motorsports guys, you know, all these other guys, you know, in, in the mid, the mid pack and, you know, further back and just seeing my name on the screen at Daytona, seeing my car parked between Joe Gibbs racing cars, seeing all these things at Daytona mind you like, first of all, let's just talk about how freaking cool that is. Like that's some of the things that that's one of the things that I've like, made sure to myself that I don't lose is just how cool I think this is like that like we, we all forget that sometimes like sometimes when I'm in the middle of like three wide at Daytona I know this sounds goofy but I'll be like man if I just twitch the wheel a little bit I could be a, I could cause real problems <laughs> <laughs> like I could I'm like man I can make every NASCAR crash compilation on YouTube right now <laughs> um but it's like it's it's just crazy. Like, and that's the biggest thing to me is I chase something that I think is so cool and it's a dream of mine. And I, and to me, I don't have any plans on stopping for another 10, 15 years. 